to show you that the civil rights movement was a communist movement. Just like the Black Power movement, the civil rights movement is communist, which is Jesuitical. And a lot of the civil rights leaders were a bunch of adulterers and, and uh, perverts and all this other stuff. But the civil rights movement has origins in communism. Just, sorry, I have something in my throat. Plain and simple, they're communists. So I'm going to read this to you. This is from the hankeringforhistory.com talking about uh, the Communist Party and the Civil Rights Movement. And the Civil Rights Movement was a Jesuitical plot to basically overthrow the laws against interracial marriage and just mix all the kindreds. That simple. But I'm going to show this to you. When one thinks of the obstacles that blacks had to overcome in America, there are a few obvious uh, obstructions. The Ku Klux Klan, poll taxes, Jim Crow laws, uh, and one not so obvious, however, was the Communist Party. The Communist Party and the Civil Rights Movement had promised a mutually beneficial, beneficial relationship Look at that, a mutually beneficial relationship. However, it turned sour very quickly. As a nation, the American people detest communism. Unfortunately, this hate became a large hindrance to the civil rights movement. Starting in the 1920s, Communist Party members began to focus on the needs of unemployed in the poorest parts of the nation. As it turned out, one of the turned out the poorest of the poor were the African American communities in the Black Belt. <coughs> Sorry, I just got to cough there. As the New Deal era brought about unions, the Communist Party became involved. They saw it as an opportunity to fight against social and economic issues regarding the class system. Union participation saw a five-fold growth just in just one decade. The Communists were against racism, however, their main attraction to blacks was gathering their involvement with the labor movement, and unions promised to be a metaphorical gold mine. One of the main events that solidified the Communist Party and the Civil Rights Movement relationship was the Scottsboro case. In 1931, nine black teenage boys were arrested for rape. While this case stands as a pillar of injustice caused by denying the impartial jury for fair sentencing, uh, the effective counsel it represented the lengths that the Communist Party was willing to go to to support civil rights and civil liberties. <laughs> yeah, sure, the Communists supporting civil liberties and civil rights. I don't think so. Look at all these communist countries, which are run by state-enforced atheism, by the way. So whenever an atheist says, oh, Christians, the Catholic Church, well, first of all, it's the Catholic Church that did the Inquisition. It wasn't Bible-believing Christians. The Catholic Church is a pagan cult. But what about, they'll say, well, the Christians oppress people. What about communism, which is state-enforced atheism? What about China? What about North Korea? State-enforced atheism. And, 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 oh, but atheists don't oppress people. Sure. Not only did the Communist Party see it to the, or see to it that the case was appealed, but their efforts virtually ended all white juries. See, the Communist Party, they were in, in league with the Civil Rights Movement. The other than the NAACP, the Communist Party was the only organization that came to the aid of those wrongfully accused. In 1940, Communists pa passed the, or sorry, Congress, not Communists, passed the Alien Registration Act. I'm not the best at reading on a computer, so I do apologize. Act of 1940, also known as the Smith Act. It set criminal penalties for advocating the overthrow of the U.S. government. As the Communist Party attempted to recruit blacks, the majority of Americans saw it as the Communist attempt to infiltrate African American communities. Blacks quickly saw that the United States was turning against the Communist Party, and the Civil Rights Movement severed all ties with the Communist operated organizations and unions. So they were, they were in bed with the Communist Party from the beginning. Unfortunately, it was too late. Americans and government officials, such as FBI Director J. Ed Edgar Hoover, uh, who continued to link communism with the Civil Rights Movement, this created, or sorry, would continue to link communism with the Civil Rights Movement. This created quite a headache for later leaders, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, that pervert, that that Jesuit, that communist. As the Communist Party and the Civil Rights Movement had a falling out, luckily other organizations stepped in and piggybacked on ideas that the Communists had implanted. One example would be in Birmingham, Alabama. In the early 1930s, the Communist Party made progressive strides in civil liberties and voter registration. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny because when they're doing this, over in Soviet Russia and Communist China, they're like massacring people. The government is. But, oh no, no, but the Communist Party supports freedom and liberty. You know, state atheism supports freedom and liberty. Sure. You know, the Jesuits support freedom and liberty, sure. When the, the Communist Party was forced out, organizations such as the Southern Conference for Human Welfare, Welfare's Committee for Alabama, and the Congress of Industrial Organizations stepped in where the Communists had left off. So they're just taking their place. 
One of the sharpest thorns that the, com thorns that the Communist Party had inadvertently plunged into the side of the Civil Rights Movement occurred in the 1946 election. The liberals of the United States had turned on each other in a battle over communism. Patricia Sullivan, author of The Days of Hope, Race, and Democracy in the New Deal Era, referred to the party's behavior as a form of social, oh, sorry, as a form of self-destruction. Uh, there were those that believed that the communist movement had em embolsed the left, that the Democrats' support for the countries was, a was the lowest since 1928, and the Republicans, and, yeah, and the Republicans, by the way, were also used to overthrow the, the anti-miscegenation laws. For using the Communist Party to hopelessly divide and destroy the liberal movement, this self-destructive behavior led to a, there were a Republican sweep in both houses of Congress, a sweep that would allow the House on American the ha the House Un-American Activities Committee to purge communists and their allies from major institutions in American life. It is true that the Communist Party was an early friend to blacks. However, I believe in the long run they set back civil rights, the civil rights movement by decades. Yeah, it wasn't by intentional though. And, and they weren't also fighting against the laws against interracial marriage. They were supporting it. So the Communist Party was in league with the civil rights movement from the very beginning. Uh, next article says here about... Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. talks about communism. Here's actually a picture of Martin Luther King Jr. at a communist training school. So he was a communist. That's simple. A lot of these black power groups, a lot of these civil rights groups, they're communists. In the Cold War climate of the 1950s and 60s, this is from the King's Institute, Stanford.edu, uh, in the Cold War climate of the 1950s and 60s, the threat of communism galvanized public attention. In 1953, Martin Luther King called communism one of the most important issues of our day. As King rose to prominence, he frequently had to defend himself against allegations of being communist. Uh, through, though his view that communism and Christianity were fundamentally incompatible did not change. Uh, although sympathetic, sympathetic to communism's core concern with social justice, King accompanied, complained, sorry, complained that with its cold atheism wrapped in the garments of materialism, communism provided no place for God or Christ. Okay, so then why was he at a communist training school? You know, and he's right. Communism with this cold atheism has no place for God and Christ. Communism with state-enforced atheism oppresses uh, anyone that doesn't agree with them. I mean, over in Soviet Russia, they were rounding up, you know, religious people and putting them in the gulag. So, the Communist Party and state-enforced atheism are oppressive. No, no doubt about that. But Martin Luther King, he was a communist. King first studied communism while, while on his own while a student at Kozar Theological Seminary. Why is the Theological Seminary promoting communism? Uh, in 1949, in his 19, 1958 memoir, he reported that although he rejected communism's core tenets, he was sympathetic to a Marxist critique of capitalism, finding a gulf between superfluous wealth and adject poverty that existed in the United States morally wrong. Writing to writing his future wife, Cloretta Scott, dating the first summer of their on their relationship, he told her that he was more socialistic in my economic theory than capitalistic. Yet. I am not so opposed to capitalism that I have failed to see its relative merits. So, he was a socialist. King began preaching on communism's challenge to Christianity, repeating sermons on the same theme throughout his career, including one of his chapter in his 1968 volume of sermons. Communism's presence demanded, or demanded social, sober discussion. He preached because communism is, is the only serious, look at this, because communism is the only serious revival to Christianity. Huh? Communism is a revival to Christianity? I don't think so. Co uh, King critiqued communism's ethical relativism, which, which allowed evil and destructive means to justify uh, an idealistic end. Communism, wrote King, robs the man of that equality, which makes him man, and that is being a child of God. So he, he would speak against communism, but he agreed with, with parts of communism. Okay. But, oh no, he wasn't a communist, though. Despite King's constant rejection of communism in 1962, his association with a few alleged communists prompted the Federal Bureau of Re Investigation to launch an, inve launch an investigation into his alleged links with the Communist Party. In 1976, the U.S. Senate Committee revering the FBI's investigation of King noted we have seen no evidence of establishing those either of those advisors to exploit the civil rights movement to carry out the plans of the Communist Party. Yeah, but in the last article, we read that the Communist Party was in bed with the civil rights movement. So, uh, it could be some cover-up. 
from wiretaps initiated in 1963, the FBI fed controversial information to the White House and offered it to friendly reporters in an effort to discredit King. You know, all that stuff. Just going to skim down here. Uh, and he talks about the Civil Rights Movement, you know, the the uh, Communist and this Freedom Movement, all that stuff. Uh, King bowed, or in 1963, 1963, King bowed to the wishes of Kennedy, of the Kennedy administration, and fired SCLC employee Jack O'Deal, Ardell, after the FBI alleged that he was a communist. So, you get the picture, I mean, he goes down there. King's position on the war against communists in Vietnam, like his overall position on communism, was rooted in the Christian belief in brotherhood. Indeed, the summer of 1965, the press reported that King, King's off-the-cuffs Remarks to a Southern Christian Leadership Conference rally in Virginia: "We're not going to defeat communism with but with uh, bombs, guns, and, and gases. We must work this out in the framework of our democracy." And it goes down there. But keep in mind what he said: communism is the only revival to Christianity. Really, I don't think so because communism is, a, is and state-enforced atheism is a threat to religious freedom. So, the bottom line is that the Civil Rights Movement was a Jesuitical Communist movement that tried to overthrow the law, the Christian laws against miscegenation and get all the kindreds mixing. Because the Jesuits, they, it was two Jesuit lawyers that overthrew the anti-miscegenation laws. So, the Communist Movement, the Civil Rights Movement, and the Jesuits, they're all working together, just like the whole Black Power Movement, the Black Panther Party, the, uh, new, the new Black Panther Party, the Nation of Islam, all these groups. They're all, they're all communist. They're all Jesuitical. All, all Masonic, too, by the way. So, don't be deceived by all this, this uh, race talk in the United States. The uh, Bible condemns interracial marriage on many occasions. There are many, many verses. The book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah, you know, Numbers 25, all these different verses condemn the sin of interracial marriage. And, the, and by the way, the answer to the problem of capitalism is not communism. The answer is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ makes all things perfect. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.